good afternoon and greetings to everybody. Thank you for uh, giving me an opportunity to take part in this international e-conference. And uh, I greet the jury members also. And I'm going to talk about the disease, dementia, and how is it portrayed in literature. Dementia takes someone you love twice. First, when it took, takes over their mind and when their ba battle is finally over. So it's like a death before death. It is one of the biggest crises of 21st century. More than 12 million people are suffering from this deadly insidious disease and expected uh, quantity is going to rise in coming years. And essentially it is a disease of the brain. It's a cognitive disease. And it is an umbrella term for disease carrying symptoms like confusion, chaos, disorientation, difficulties carrying out daily tasks, short-term memory loss, etc. The book that I have taken is written by Lisa Genova, a debut novel by her, and it's all about dementia. Uh, the protagonist of the novel is Alice, and uh, she is a celebrated Howard professor. Suddenly, one fine morning, she is at an intersection where she does not know which road to take, which she has traded for 25 years. She does not know how to bake a pastry, which she has baked on Christmas Eve for 25 long years. She forgets her blueberry phone in freezer. And moreover, she, uh, she is she's a celebrated Harvard professor who is ready to deliver her lecture. And in the middle of it, she forgets how to deliver her lecture or she forgets she is not able to recollect the words which she has to speak. Uh, uh, can I go to the second slide? Yeah. So now here, dementia raises the eternal question, whether the person is destroyed when a brain is destroyed. If a person is suffering from heart disease, the person does not, does not die. The person still lives. So why the diseases which are uh, uh, connected to mental, uh, uh, connected to mind, are stigmatic and they create an illusion that person will not live after having this disease. Another important question arises whether it is mandatory to have psychological connectivity and continue to be a person. Like suppose if we take still, uh, if we take Alice in her pre uh, past life, she was a celebrated Harvard professor. Now she has, after the, this diagnosis of dementia, she has become a scary person whom everybody wants to avoid whom everybody wants, does not want to face. So is it necessary, is it mandatory to have a psychological connectivity to be a person? Then is it correct to reduce a person just to a psychological phenomenon? If you do not have connectivity, that does not mean you will not go, you are not going to be the person anymore. Uh, please, uh, third slide. Can I move to the next slide? Yeah. So it is a terrifying, heartbreaking story of Alice Holland, uh, still Alice, and uh, she suffers from early onset of dementia. Late onset of dementia is about uh, after 65 years. So she suffers from early onset of dementia. She's at a, she's just 50 years old and uh, she feels as if sea of anxiety swelling perilously in her body. And then she forgets everything and she's a Harvard professor. The Harvard professor, she, she has to fake like a professor because she is not able to understand and connect with her students. So a much sort of sought after professor is ignored, alienated, and bored. So now, how do we understand identity through Still Alice? Personal identity is not a song written by you. It's solely by you. It is written by others also. You are just a co-author of your narrational identity. What you want to be, who you are, who you might become depends upon your perception, performances, reflections, rejections by yourself as well by, as by others. Self-ascription and ascription by others. So now you are not a author of your personal identity. Then what is the contribution of others? Others have to go on contributing to writing your story and contributing to your ongoing life narratives because cognitively you have become minimal. So it's like a shift from autobiography to biography. Please may I move to the next slide. Now challenges that are faced due to dementia. Challenge, 
relational a person's relational identity is challenged by dementia now suppose a person has to exist like a person then others surrounding him or her has to support support him or her because person's identity person's memory belonging and recognition is threatened by dementia but not identity because if others surrounding the person are regularly contributing to person's identity then a person with dementia also can exist uh, in the novel still alice alice forgets the appointment or alice remembers her mother's death because she is able to access her long term memories so alice remembers the death of her mother or alice tries to analyze the death of her mother and that time she feels the pain and embarrassment and then then sadness so that time she understand that her mother is dead long time back so other than truthfulness other than truthfulness we have to place kindness so we can place kindness above truthfulness towards demented people may i go to the next slide please next slide please. yeah so now relationships also crumble alice is a mother of three grown up children tom and anna were very successful in their careers her husband john moves to the next segment of his career moves to new york asks alice to come along with him but alice refuses because a demented person has to stay back in family uh, familiar spaces so the daughter who was a rebellious in her teens and not on friendly terms with her the youngest daughter comes to her rescue and stays with her and sacrifices her acting career and uh, looks after her mother in her uh, weaning years may i move to the next slide so personal identity and relationship all these things crumble because certain relationships cannot withstand the rash tides of dementia relationships evolve dissolve and rupture the relationship with her husband has dissolved the relationship with her husband has ruptured but the relationship with her youngest daughter has evolved so when a person is suffering from dementia the relationships also change please next slide next slide please so now what what is the difference between personality versus personal identity personality is like your traits and inclinations pers previous slide please previous slide personality is your traits and previous uh, your inclinations and personal identity is like your uh, interactions actions reactions and your own self ascription and ascription by others like people suffering from dementia become frustrated angry abusive pan these are changes in the personal parent might be a parent uh, uh, be it a mother or be it a father but a person who is very very uh, cognitively very very sharp mind can be raised but a person if you are looking for a emotional compatibility in the person then personal identity remains the same for the person please next slide next slide please previous slide yeah so now there is a very uh, towards the last scene when alice is has forgotten all about herself has forgotten about her career has forgotten about everything that surrounded her personality and she she is sitting and she is a she has a baby in her lap she just calls addresses that baby as a newborn baby and she has her daughter and acting a scene in front of her she calls that her daughter as a new as a actress her own daughter as an actress now her own daughter lydia enacts a scene and calls uh, and uh, asks her mother mom what have you understood then alice says young lady i have understood that these are all the things about love the basic things about these lines is all about love so alice might a uh, neuro linguistic professor might not have understood about the language but the neuro linguistic professor has understood the abstract concept behind that those uh, uh, sentences that it's all about love so very famous lines by oliver sack that 
in examining the disease you gain wisdom about anatomy and physiology but when you examine the person you gain wisdom about life life in itself when life gets minimal when all the cognitive abilities decline still you remain a person with the, your intact personal identity maybe your cognitive abilities decline maybe you are not able to contribute that much to your career or uh, uh, to your family or life but still you are the person so if the brain is destroyed everything of the person is not destroyed because the person is embedded in culture the person is embedded in history and the person is embedded in socio political views also thank you that's all my presentation is